that, that's that's big time money. And um, let's hope that, you know those things continue to happen. Now, um, Dallas, you know, got some little things going on with their coaching staff. Uh, you, we talked about that, um, especially um, Utah Jazz are set to interview Maz assistant Sean Sweeney, mm-hmm. the architect and the defensive game planner. What's your kind of thoughts on that? Because we already talked about Lucas, the offensive. Uh, guy he did he go to the nets or the nets were kind of courting him what do you kind of feel about these two kind of offensive pieces and defensive pieces possibly leaving the mavericks uh the possibility of of sweeney leaving i think is is an interesting one uh the defense for the mavericks jumped from like 22nd to like ninth this season Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a phenomenal phenomenal upgrade as far as uh the improvement that and Sweeney deserves a lot of credit for that. You know, he was kid gets a lot of credit, rightly so, for kind of turning teams around defensively. Anywhere he's gone that first year, they've had a drastic turnaround. The Mavericks were the biggest example of that. But mm-hmm. Sweeney gets a lot of credit because the game planning and all of that is kind of his deal. And there's a reason he's going from a guy who was like a college professor a few years ago and nobody really heard of him to assistant coach and now suddenly interviewing as like a head coach. Like there's a reason his stock has elevated that high and it's we'll see what he's able to do and like how the Mavericks attack the jazz. The jazz were like the number two scoring offense in the NBA this year. And mm-hmm. he made them look, you know, just completely uh, worthless mm-hmm. Them look mediocre a lot of the time. And it wasn't just how they were largely keeping Mitchell out of his game, but things they were doing that just disrupted things. They basically took the jazz's greatest strength and took it away from them turn them into a mid-range shooting team, which they are not. So Mm -hmm. then to adjust to the polar opposite where Phoenix loves the mid-range game and adjust there, take that away from them and suddenly you pull off that upset. It's just like, you see why the stock elevated. People are looking at it and saying, yeah, this is largely responsible. So the the offense might dip a little bit with uh, Igor gone. The, The defense might dip a little bit too potentially, but I still think Sweeney could be a bigger potential loss if on, but I also think he's the one who will, who was more likely to move on just because um, of how drastic his rise has been. And I think the option and possibility of moving in certainly to like a head coaching position, nobody's going to turn that down, let alone a uh, younger. Right. Yeah. You're definitely not going to do that at all. I mean, so we were talking about Brunson, you know, Luca and Brunson were the highest scoring duo in the playoffs this year. That's kind of interesting, uh, considering what you saw, what's going on in the playoffs with Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson, these type of guys. So, you know, we just were talking about, you know, we you think that we're finished at least on the inside moves as far as the big goes, as far as, you know, doing any kind of trade possibilities. I kind of want to circle back once again, mm-hmm. um, you know, at the guard position, because, you know, like you said, we got Jalen Brunson. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. is uh, still around. Dan Whitty, we don't know what's going to happen with that. But as I was saying before, do you think that they should go attack and still try to get a like a two guard? Uh, or should we be satisfied? Because you just said, and I agree with you when you're talking about Dallas doesn't need all these like major superstars with Luca, okay? Mm-hmm. Because Luca is the ball dominant, and and he he Luca the way we watch the game in the playoffs this season, you don't need all those type of players. I feel because the way Luca plays, it's okay. You can have a lot of good role players and still win. He just proved it. But do you think they should get another two guard? Or are they going to be? Should we be satisfied at our position at the two guard spot? I think uh, I think there's a good chance that you're probably going to need to be content with what, what they're at. I don't think you have Dinwiddie and Hardaway on this roster and Brunson. I, I, but that said of those three, of those three, the one that would be to me most dispensable would be Dinwiddie because I think Hardaway bring what he brings. There's value to what he brings. And you talk about a streaky two card off the bench that could be very, very valuable to this team and now that you have a little bit of offensive firepower before I know when we talked about this hypothetical a couple weeks ago I Mm -hmm. made the case for Dinwiddie making more sense and I I think generally that is the case but I do think the equation has changed here a little bit now where now you have someone like Wood that's going to bring a little bit more of an interior game uh, to this team and still have the ability to stretch the floor that's just something that you didn't really have before you know when your best three point shooter in your front court before was Maxi. And the dude was feast or famine so much this year. either 
11 of 14 in stretches, or he would be two for 37 at just being mm-hmm. hot and cold nightmare or just absolute dream. And that's just now you've got more balance there. And so I think Hardaway might, especially with his contract being a little bit lower than Denwitty's, he might actually have an option and a possibility for staying in there. Because I do mm-hmm. think the Mavericks don't make this move with the intention of like, okay, this is like a one year deal with Christian Wood. You know, that's possible. I, I think they're willing to, they've shown they're willing to be open with that. When they traded for Nerland's Noel, for instance, um, they, they initially offered him a four for $70 million contract. He amazingly uh, turned down. And then they were like, all right, well, we'll give you, you'll get the qualifying offer and we're not going to bend over backwards beyond that. And they walked away after a year. They were like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter if we had plans for you and we invested in this idea of you. We're going to do what makes sense. So they've shown that they're willing to do that. And in this case, I think uh, Wood has to be, at least now, playing into the longer term vision for this team. And if that's the case, they got to be a little bit careful with how they manage this cap. If you're going to keep Brunson and you're keeping intending to keep um, Wood, then Mm -hmm. you're going to have to find a way to move some things around with Dinwiddie part away. If you're keeping one, Hardaway's lower price tag, despite the defensive deficiencies, might have a stronger case there. Hmm. So, I mean that, that that's it's it's a lot of things going on. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting offseason already. Uh, so, it's going to be a lot of things to talk about now.